Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. I mean, unless you want to stand perpetually, in which case, who am I to tell you what to do? Um, oh, there's my cabaret egg from last week. Yay. It's a, it's a Cadbury egg. Because you guys know me. And, um, you know, I adore Cadbury eggs. Um, I know, I, and I, I'm really, really good, guys. I don't eat them during Lent, even though they come out, you know, as soon as Jesus is born, Christmas is over, and we start breaking out the eggs. And I spend that whole time not eating them. So I feel like I should get credit for that. Thank you. I'm the queen of self-control, let me tell you. All right, well, let's talk about our gospel today instead of Cadbury eggs. I mean, Cadbury eggs are delicious, though. Um, okay, so lot A, God bless you guys for actually going to church the Sunday after Easter. I was a little, I just kind of thought it'd be me, so I wasn't you know, really not worried about it, to be honest with you, but look at you. You get, um, you, you get some jewels in your crown in heaven. People who go to church this Sunday after Christmas and Easter, go you. Um, but it's always the same story. It's always the Doubting Thomas story, and we love to talk about the Doubting Thomas, but I think in kind of hyper-focusing on, on the Doubting Thomas part of the story, we miss some of the other stories. So I want us to talk about the whole story um, because it really goes something like this. Um, we had Easter, right? And um, Jesus is risen, but they're not, quite, they're not quite on board with everything that's going on, right? So we know, they know that Jesus is missing, but, you know, we're not really, really sure. And they're very, very scared, right? Because I don't know if you followed the story about what they did to Jesus, but all of his followers are worried that they're next. And so are you a little bit surprised that they're holed up in a room? I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be like, ooh, well. I mean, I'm not really made for crucifixion. <laughs> like, the struggle of not eating a Cadbury egg until Easter. That's a struggle for me. That's the kind of sacrifice I'm made for. You know, I'm not really a crucifixion kind of person. And so they weren't either, because nobody is. The Romans are really, really good about making sure that nobody ever wants to have happened to them what they come up with. So none of them are okay with this, and so they're all hidden away. And yet, in the midst of this moment, when they're all locked up, bam, there's Jesus. And they're like, hey, Jesus, haven't seen you in a while. And he's like, you a little bit worried, a little bit scared right now? And they're like, yeah, sure am. And what does he say to them in that moment? Peace be with you. In that moment, where, where in your horror and your terror where you don't want to be, where you want to be anywhere else, all you want is safety and security, peace be with you. And I think this is really, really important because and I want you to pay attention. And then next readings for the next few weeks, when Jesus appears, there's always going to be a part where John makes sure that you know that Jesus is physically real, okay? And that's important. Jesus is not a ghost, and John wants to make sure that you know Jesus is not a ghost. Like, he's not like vapor. You can't just like pass through him. He's physically human and real. And so there are a couple things in this story um, that are really, really important to notice. One is, and you don't maybe pick up on it, maybe you don't pick up on it, is, is the way that he breathes on them. Okay? Like, this is like pre-COVID breathing on you. Okay? Um, but there's a physicality in it. 
that literally Jesus breathes on them and that alters them. That that alters them physically. That Jesus is physically there. Jesus physically breathes on them. And that they are changed in that. That's our first physical piece in this story. The second is when Thomas says, "Uh uh-uh, I don't believe in it. Because I don't believe in ghosts. Y'all know that person. I don't believe in ghosts. And they're like, no, no, I'm not a ghost. And he's like, I don't believe, uh uh-uh. And um, and let's be honest, we'd all be that person, right? Like, who trusts all your friends, okay? Like, remember, these are all bros. They've all been hanging. This is like a wandering frat party, okay? And anyone ever been pranked by one of your friends? And they're like, well, you weren't there, but if you'd been at the party, you would have seen, but you weren't there. And you're like, that's not true. Okay, so does anyone blame Thomas? No, we'd all be Thomas. I mean, frankly, you should be Thomas. You shouldn't believe all your friends all the time because they come up with the most ridiculous stories. And, but when Jesus interacts with Thomas, you kind of go, ew, right? Does anyone else, or is that just me that goes, ooh? Like, put your, hey, hey hands right here. Put your fingers in my hand. Put them in my side. Ew, that's gross. It's supposed to be gross because it means that Jesus is real. That Jesus' body has been altered by crucifixion, right? But Jesus is here and now alive. That's important to John. That's important that we know that Jesus is physically real. Why does any of this really truly matter? And you're like, does it? Maybe we could talk about Cadbury eggs some more. Um, and here's the thing. We like to think that faith and, and all that stuff is a head thing. That it, our spiritual being and our faith are completely absent of our body. But it's not. It's all intertwined. Our physical bodies matter. Jesus, Jesus is having a physical body that is altered, that is harmed, that is different. And still being the Christ, that matters. Your body in whatever state that it's in is intertwined with your faith and your religion. It's not separate or bad or different or wrong. It's all together. So when God comes to us, It's within these bodies. That's okay. Our bodies are okay. And I know in our culture, we like to say things are wrong or that different is bad or that if you're sick or something is wrong, that that you're somehow separated from God, right? But Jesus, Jesus God's self, Jesus himself is altered and physically different. And yet, it is in that, it is in that physical body that God interacts with us. And that's a good thing. That's an okay thing. And that's why I think the story matters so much. Because we want to separate things. We want to make things different or other. And we want us to be different or other, don't we? We think that what's wrong or what is good is somehow intertwined, but it's not. It's, it's all together, all the time. Our faith is part of our living physical being. God is part of our living physical being. And that's powerful, I think, personally. And so when we struggle with our physical beings, when we struggle as being human, when we struggle with all of these things, God shows up. God shows up. And God says what? Peace. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us. Did you know that the... Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.
Okay, so you know how the Cadbury egg has the Cadbury bun 